And guys, the day has come. Blue Earth Aquariums coming in to install our new 180 gallon saltwater aquarium. Woo! Look at this truck. Hey Nick, how you doing? What's up Shane, how you doing? Not too much man, ready to get you tank in your house today? I'm ready. Let's do it. The stand is coming in. It's a big stand. All right guys, so we got the stand. It is now in the house. It fits actually perfect right on the wall that I wanted to go on. And it's a massive stand. I mean, look how big it is. And it has all the filtration underneath. So this is gonna be really cool. Here comes the top, massive top. Here we go guys. We got the aquarium itself in place. Right now, Blue Earth Aquariums is doing all the installation for it with the filters and cleaning pretty much everything up. But this tank is massive. Look how thick it is. It is literally my whole arm. That's how thick it is. And then in the front, it's also huge. But yeah, let's get this started and I'll pick up the camera once we get a little more progress. So yeah, yeah. this light's a pretty technologically advanced light. It's just complicated to use. I'm simplifying it for you a little bit, make it a little bit better. Gotcha. So these are some, I'm guessing, high-tech lights. They look pretty high-tech. Yeah, they're, they're LED lights. They basically have a good amount of photosynthetic radiation mm -hmm. in case in the future you decide to do coral. Uh, they also produce low heat and they don't use a lot of power. So kind of most of the industry has switched over to these in the last maybe five to ten years. So gotcha. it's kind of an advancement over the old VHOs and T5s and stuff like that we used to use. Basically right now I'm just hooking up all the plumbing. Basically we're gonna have all the drain, all the water comes from the top. It's gonna overflow and these overflows come down and work its way into the filtration system. Then I'll hook up the pressure side so the pump will fire all the water back upstairs, back into the tank and it'll basically be in a loop. So all this water comes down, goes through the filter, goes back upstairs and continues to clean it for you. Awesome. So this is a sump, right, correct? Yes sir, this is a refugium sump. And it just goes through certain cycles? Yeah, basically the water's gonna come through, go down through to these big filter socks. We gotta get them all cleaned up for you. Gotcha. And then we'll go into the next chamber, which will basically be our equipment, our protein skimmers, reactors, all that mechanical filtration will be here. The next chamber is where the actual refugium grows. We're gonna grow algae, chado, or clarpa. And basically that's gonna be an organic filtration. And then finally goes to the final chamber where the return pumps fire it back upstairs. And basically every chamber is gonna do a different level of scrub. Gotcha, awesome. All Blue Earth Aquarium's contact info will be in the description. Go check them out. They are located in Lake Worth, Florida. They sell corals, they do custom tanks, they sell fish, and a bunch of other stuff. Go check them out. Everything will be in the description down below. And yeah, Blue Earth Aquarium is getting it done. Just taking some stuff out. We're going to rework a few things. Awesome. And change it, make it a little bit better for you. So yeah, Shane is actually right now underneath the tank, organizing everything, cleaning it out, and we're going to replace it with some new things and just make it look a little bit neater. But right now it's just the filter work and that's pretty much it. What do you guys think so far? Yeah, it's going well. Going good? Going well, nicely. <laughs> to me, this thing looks insane. It's, it's taller than me, that's for sure. Might need a ladder to access it. <laughs> so, I mean, your filter is just trying to recreate what happens in nature. Mm -hmm. Lights are trying to recreate what happens in nature. So any one light doesn't have a full spectrum. So you have the red light to increase your red light spectrum, the greens, etc. So you have two different kinds of whites. So basically when you get your rainbow, that's not the same way you get all those extra colors. Gotcha. So yeah, that's the whole point of the lights, just kind of trying to make it as natural as possible. You know what's going to happen is blue, your blue lights are going to come on first and go off last. So in your photo period, for example, if you had them coming on at 3 p.m., going off at 11 p.m., your white lights are going to come on in the middle of that time, maybe for three or four hours. They might come on from, you know, maybe uh, 6 till 9 or something like that. All right, so basically what we're going to put in here is a GFO reactor. This basically is a media reactor that you can put carbon in, or in our case we're going to do GFO, which is granulated ferric oxide. It's basically a chemical that's going to help absorb any phosphates that are left in the aquarium that the protein skimmer doesn't get making for cleaner, better water. So right now we are going to be adding sand. What kind of sand is this, by the way, Shane? Uh, this is uh, live reef sand. Basically, it's a little bit heavier grade than normal. It doesn't blow around the current quite as much, so it's kind of what we prefer. Okay. You have two on on that one and none on that one. I'm aware. It's because they're daisy chain. <laughs> Another bag of sand. 
You just want the rocks to be stable on the bottom. That's mm -hmm. the key. So we put the sand in first. It's a lot easier to make sure the sand bed's nice and smooth and kind of evenly spread. And then when you put the rocks in, you kind of settle them into the sand. So mm -hmm. they're basically touching the bottom of the tank and they're really stable. Right now, we're just flattening all the sand, making it even. It looks really, really good. And smoothing it out, getting it even throughout the tank. Usually want a little bit more towards the front of the tank if possible. Yeah. And then when you do the aquascape, you know, you settle the rocks down in real nicely. Um, so they're touching the bottom, so they're a nice, a stable structure. Okay. So if you have any fish, like a jawfish or an eel or something like that, they would want to kind of get under there and dig around so the sack's nice and secure. It's not going to pull over, mm -hmm. damage the aquarium, damage one of the inhabitants, all that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. We also got live rock blue earth aquariums. They did bring some live rock. They got some live sand as well. So right now it is live rock. Once the cycling gets going in, in the tank, it will start to bring some color and grow a little. Just like building a house, you want a big strong foundation on the bottom. So you kind of use your bigger, heavier rocks on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And as you work your way up, it kind of gets lighter and a little bit fluffier on the top. But um, go ahead, you know, again, we kind of settle it down in the sand a little bit to make a nice sturdy base there. So that guy's not going anywhere. Yeah. Just scaping out the tank right now with some rocks, kind of making it go like come out from the back and that's going to look really cool. So we have some caves and stuff for our fish to hide in and it just gives it a lot of character. We also have a lot more rock to work with. We got some little caves going on over here and over here we're going to do the same. But it looks pretty good. Like Shane was saying, it's good to have these little caves. Just in case you have a bigger fish that's messing with a smaller fish and he wants to escape and hide, he can do so. So that's kind of the point of that. So right now, Shane is actually doing what he calls the tap test. It's basically, you just tap the rock, make sure if like for say, a fish bumped into it, it wouldn't fall over. So he's just acting as like, just making sure it's not, yeah, fish yeah. Or anything like that. not loose or anything. And again, that's why I put the light rocks on the top. If anything did just dislodge or something like that, it's like a light. Yeah. Know, it's not going to do a lot less damage than a big heavy boulder that would topple over. So. Mm -hmm. so right now the tank is looking good. Shane did a great job escaping this out. It's not completed yet. We're almost there and it looks amazing so far. So the rock work is complete on our aquarium. Sorry about the glare, but it looks amazing. Let's get a little close up on that. We got a bunch of little caves for our fish to hide in. And guys... I still don't know what fish I want to get for this aquarium. Go comment right now. Let me know what you think. And if we're able to get them, we will get them. You know, you usually want a, an aquascape that's kind of got a little bit of a slope to it like this. And the reason is so the corals on the bottom don't get blocked out from light by the corals on the top. Gotcha. If you're real steep like this, when these corals grow and expand, they're basically going to block the photosynthetic radiation from the lower corals. So if you get a little nicer lean like this, it enables you to place more corals on there and they all get sufficient light. Shane was mentioning in the future, if we decided to get corals for this tank, it is very possible. We have a lot of surfaces that can hold corals. So if you guys think we should get corals in the future, make sure you go comment down below right now. Leave a comment, yes or no, that we should get corals. So this sand is actually going in. What is that part this called? Is, this part is the refugium. The whole refugium. sump is what now it's a refugium sump. Okay. Like a Berlin style. I didn't know a lot of this stuff, but learning it from professionals helps me definitely a lot. So if you guys are ever looking to get a saltwater tank, hit up Blue Earth Aquariums. So make sure you guys go check them out. This is almost completed and I cannot wait. So what is this thing right here? So this is actually some macroalgae we're gonna put in inside the filter. So. What it's gonna do is it's gonna um, basically feed on nutrients in the tank. Gotcha. It's gonna help to keep your phosphates and nitrates in check, and it's gonna compete for any nuisance algae, algae that would wanna grow in your main display. It's basically gonna eat a lot of those nutrients up, so it's a good thing to have in there. So what, you just throw that in the... Yeah, it's just gonna go in the filter underneath, and we installed some lights in here. So basically these lights will sh shine down and provide you know that photosynthetic radiation for the algae. Oh, awesome. The algae will um, you know obviously eat the nutrients in the tank, so fish waste and stuff like that. In addition to the protein skimmer, this is probably one of the most important parts of filtration in our opinion. Uh, it definitely does a good job and helps the tank out a lot and the water quality a lot. Really? Yep. So you just toss it in there like that and let it do its thing? Yeah, it's gonna grow up. There's some little grates in here in the filter, mm -hmm. and that'll basically keep it from spilling over into the sponge okay. area here, uh, which is just a large mechanical filter. Uh, over in this chamber here, you have your protein skimmer. And what that does is basically uh, takes out waste from the tank before it even gets broken down. So, um, you know, each protein molecule has a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic end. Mm -hmm. One end likes air, one end likes water. 
So what that does is, uh, you know, a bubble is a perfect surface for those molecules to attach to. And then they basically come up in the protein, you know, skimmer and uh, are deposited into the collection cup. You can take it outside, dump it, and then basically start over. You know, it's uh -huh. some more waste out. So it's a good thing to have in there. Yeah. So now we are going to fill up our aquarium. You can actually see me in the reflection. Hi. And let's do it. This is going to be awesome, guys. Got the hose leading to... What is this? So is this just regular salt water, Shane? Yeah, yeah it's filtered seawater. Okay. That's actually what it is. So yeah, we got the hose running to the aquarium itself, then to the truck. So that tank right there has 400 gallons of water in it, salt water, and it's running through this hose all the way up here to our aquarium. Let's see. I said, most people cycle the tank with a, a couple of clownfish or a couple of damsel or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, something that's pretty hardy, um, it's going to do well in the cycle. Uh, you can put some crabs in there and feed them, but basically you need some waste to start being produced in the tank so you can build up those populations of aerobic bacteria. Gotcha. And once they get kind of built up a little bit, then you can slowly add some more fish. Okay. Go from there. Perfect. So you heard it from the professional himself. You just add a few little living things and then like crabs, for example, little clownfish, and then we can add our bigger fish. You just want to help the tank get a little head start, basically. So right there, that little machine right there controls all the water speed. You can control how fast it comes out. If you want to slow it down or make it go faster, you can do that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, the water is first deposited in this chamber here. Uh, this basically has two seven inch filter stops. Uh, they're about 100 micron and they help to filter out kind of any larger particles. Uh, they catch waste, they catch a little bit of everything. Uh, the water then goes into the second chamber here with your protein skimmer. Uh, again, that's pretty much the heart of your filtration system, removing a lot of the waste before it gets broken down. Um, the next chamber over here is going to be uh, your refugium area where you have your macroalgae growing. And then we have a, uh, an additional sponge filter here, uh, which basically keeps any junk that made it through the rest of the filter from getting into a return pump so you don't get sucked up and damage the impeller or cause any problems in your gotcha. return pumps. Big shout out to Blue Earth Aquariums. Like I said, guys, their link will be in the description. Go check them out. They sell corals. They sell live fish. They do custom aquariums. They also do maintenance on aquariums. So go check them out. And I'm gonna pick the camera back up in the morning once the tank is crystal clear. And yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. What is going on everyone it is the next morning. I wanna show you guys this fish tank, how much it cleared up and how amazing it looks. It's crazy. And I just wanna give a massive shout out to Blue Earth Aquariums for making this happen. If it wasn't for them, I would not have this saltwater aquarium. So guys, do me a big favor. Let them know Nick sent you. All their contact info will be in the link down below. Go check them out. Their address is there. They're located in Lake Worth, Florida. So if you're around that area and looking to pick up some saltwater aquarium supplies, corals, fish, aquariums, whatever, they have that. So guys, go check them out. I'm also gonna have that in the description down below. But anyways, I'm not gonna talk anymore. Let's go check out the tank. And here she is. Look at how good this looks. It's amazing, wow. So we got live rock in there. We got our flow maker right there. We got our filters running. We got our live bacteria in our sump. It looks amazing. Just, uh, I'm at loss of words to be honest, guys. I'm so happy with the outcome of this. I mean, just look at all the little details. Like right here, if we want to feed our fish, we just open these doors. This also lifts up like that. And then over here, if we want to access our sump from a different angle, we can do so. But with that being said, guys, we got our new saltwater aquarium, 180 gallons plus the sum, so equals around 200 gallons probably. We are going to get some awesome fish for this thing, and I cannot wait to do feedings with this and just everything. So guys, make sure you comment down below right now what fish we should get for this aquarium. So yeah, make sure you guys go and comment, and I guess we'll see you in the next one. See ya!